students, Wendy Ansley here, kinesiology professor at College of the Desert. I have a well-rounded sequence for you today. And today we're gonna explore often one of my students' favorite postures, and that is pigeon, Ekapada Raj Kapatasana. Pigeon has many different expressions, and you can study it for years before you continue to progress and improve. But the posture itself is incredible. The front leg comes into its bent and it comes into abduction and hip flexion and often releases the deep external rotators. The back leg does the exact opposite. It is straight, it is in hip extension and it releases the psoas, the major hip flexors. So it is incredible for releasing the muscles around the pelvic hip girdle. But when we dive into it, we can explore pigeon because it is also a hip opener, a forward fold and a back bend. So the whole body now is energized and, involved and, and really evolved. But why do people love pigeon? Well, many reasons. It is a deep emotional release. You might connect to that in the posture. By holding that for a while, you release some emotions. You release stress, you release negativity, and you reflect within. So it truly is a gift. All the postures teach us different things, right? But pigeon is known for releasing the emotions. So this is a gift that I share with you. Um, as we connect today. So let's take a moment and set our own intention for our practice, our own personal and meaningful intention for our practice. Lowering our head to our fingertips. Just take a moment and set your own intention. Honoring where you are with your breath and your efforts and your energy. Gently. I also want to tell you it's an opportunity. Sometimes I bring out a smaller block and even like a blanket or a pillow that students might use to kind of explore this posture. We're going to get started lying down on our back. Supta Panangustasana put to hand pose. This is a, an amazing hip release. Many of us will utilize the strap here and it will come over the midfoot. The left hand is on the left hip and the back of the pelvis is broad. If some of you have a hard time coming here, which some of you will, this is where we can bend that left leg and help us, but I do want to keep the back of the pelvis broad. We'll start out with a little dynamic expression. We're gonna bend the right leg and now straighten it. Beautiful. Bend the right leg, flexion, extension. Bend the right leg and straighten it. We're gonna hold the hip flexion, bending the right leg. I like to continue to keep my left hand on the hip and breathe into that release. Now gently release and straighten this right leg back of the pelvis broad. I'm flexible enough where I can take my thumb and index fingers around the right big toe. It's called a little yogi grip, the thumb and the two index fingers. So most of us are holding the strap, but there's a few of us that have practiced. And we're gonna breathe into this magical release of the hamstring because we are going to be warmed up and prepared when we dive deeper into pigeon. Either holding the strap with the right hand, a little bit lower, or the thumb and index finger, we're gonna draw the right leg to the side, but, and we're gonna rest the right elbow to the ground. I'm gonna have to adjust my props here, good. Keeping the left, you know, side of the pelvis, the back of the pelvis, broad and onto the mat. Draw 
drawing that right leg back up. Beautiful. This is where we're gonna either take the strap and adjust it to our left hand, or we're gonna take the hand of the outer left foot and we're gonna kind of adjust onto this left hip and I'm extending my right arm to the ground and I'm gazing over the right shoulder and feeling that release of the upper and the middle back. Gently release. Beautiful. And we're going to adjust the other leg. We're going to draw that left leg up and we're going to either going to take the strap, right, or the thumb and index finger. And we'll start with the dynamic warm up where we're going to come into flexion. And hold here, hold. And now we're gonna straighten that left leg. We can take the thumb and index finger around the big toe if we want, or we can continue to hold the strap, honoring wherever we are. Let's keep the right hand on that right hip and just breathe it into this release of the left hamstring. Powerful pose. For the, some of you that suffer with back pain, I want to encourage you to do this posture the best that you can. I often do this pose about three times a week before I go to bed. And either take the strap with the left hand and abduct it, right? Or the thumb and index finger here, we're abducting it to the left. And now I'm resting my left elbow towards the ground here and I'm breathing into my left hamstring but I'm also breathing into my right hip. Now I'm going to draw that left leg back up. Beautiful. And I'm going to either adjust the strap now with my right hand or my outer edge of my foot with my right hand. And I'm coming onto the right hip. And then I'm gazing over my left shoulder as I press my left palm into the ground. We're going to draw both knees to the chest, clasp around the shins, and just kind of breathe evenly. This is a supine forward fold. Just breathe evenly into both sides of the lower back. Love it. You're going to stay here and hold a while. I'm going to adjust my curtain here just to make sure that the light is not too bright here. As we lay on our backs, we're going to explore pigeon another level in a supine way. So we're going to lightly draw that right foot towards that left knee as that left leg is bent here. 
Now this is where we're gonna do a light little dorsiflexion of the right foot and even the left foot. And as we press that right foot into this left knee, in supine modified pigeon here, we're drawing the right knee forward. We're gonna place the hands into the belly of the left hamstring and continue to draw the right knee forward. It's okay to close those eyes. For some of you a little more advanced, you might clasp around the shin here. So either the belly of the hamstring, I want the back of the shoulders the spine onto the mat. I want you to kind of broaden the collarbones, shoulders onto the mat, but continue to draw the right knee forward. It's still dorsiflexion really, of especially the right foot, but also you can awaken the left foot. Close those eyes, truly be present and release those deep external. keep this right leg bent and we're gonna draw this left foot out up here beautiful and we're going to clasp around we're gonna a dorsiflex this left foot and we're gonna draw that left knee forward beautiful and now oh, I got the Sun was coming into the way there good I love it thanks for stick sticking with me good I need to clasp the belly here of the hamstring, okay? But continue to draw that left knee forward, beautiful. Or clasp along the shin and continue to draw that left knee forward, releasing the deep external rotators. I love it. Close those eyes. Truly be present. I love it. Gently release. Clasp around the shins, draw length in the spine, preparing for our practice. We cannot stop the light from shining through, can we? We just can't stop that light from shining through. <laughs> Coming on to the hands and the knees. Let's tuck those toes. Let's do a little dynamic expression of the spine. Inhale, drop the chest to the mouth. Exhale, push into the ground, round the back. Inhale, drop the chest to the mouth. Exhale, push into the ground. Inhale, drop the chest. Exhale, push into the ground. Inhale, drop the chest. Exhale, push into the ground, round the back, tailbone in. Inhale, drop the chest, tailbone out. Exhale, push into the ground. Inhale, drop the chest, tailbone out. Exhale, push into the ground. And come into a neutral tabletop here, beautiful. Taking the hands to touch one another, here we go, the fingers are pointed towards you. And this is a little wrist flexibility and mobility. We're gonna rock forward and back, forward and back. We're preparing the wrist for our practice today. So many of you will stay right here, honoring where you are. And a few of you will keep the feet together, the feet are together here as we explore almost a version of down dog here. So we press, into the palms and we're really pressing into the soles of the feet too. 
and we're just connecting to the wrist, warming up the wrist for our practice, warming up the forearm. This is an example of yoga therapy. We're gently lowering to the knee. And we're gonna do a few wrist circles. Let's circle one direction, and now circle the other direction. I love it. Coming back into tabletop, we're gonna walk the palms forward, and we're gonna come into dynamic down dog. Let's do heel and toe, heel and toe. Feet are hip width apart. We're pressing through the palms. We're spreading the fingers wide. The thumbs are just a little bit closer, but we're spreading the fingers. We're rooting in all the fingers, but especially the second and the third finger. Belly button to the spine. We're gonna firm those thighs. That's what we're working on. Firming those, those thighs, taking the femur bones and pushing them down the sides up. Breathing into any stiffness any pain. We're going to walk the hands and the feet towards one another. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to the shins, the thighs, or the ground. Exhale, come into deep forward fold, hips over the ankles and the midfoot. Breathe into the back side of the body. Gently bend the knees. Swan dive up. Open the chest. Open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. Beautiful. We're going to come to the edge of the mat here. Looking at my uh, sun here. My light that I just can't stop shining in this beautiful early morning light. gets a little bit more in here, so I'm going to adjust here. Just can't stop the light, guys. We just can't stop the light. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where's it coming from? Do our best here guys we're gonna keep going because the light's gonna stop in a little bit here <laughs> okay we're gonna come up to the edge of the mat here guys inhale draw both arms up exhale we're gonna swan dive down Inhale, halfway lift, hands to the shins, the thighs, or the ground. Framing the feet, we're going to step that left leg back. We're going to lower that right knee to the ground. We're going to do one to two dynamics here. Beautiful. Come into a beautiful low lunge. We're going to keep that left hand on the hip, but this is where I want you to draw your right arm over a little lateral flexion of the spine. You keep the left hand on the hip. You can draw it to the ground, but a little lateral flexion of the spine. Gently release. We're going to frame the foot. We're going to step back into Thalakasana plank. Round the upper back, push into the ground. We're going to lower to the knees, chest, and chin, all at the ground at the same time. Ashtanga Pranam. Gently send those legs back, feet hip width apart. Press into the tops of the feet. Come into easy 
Cobra. Transition to all fours. Lead with those hips, cut into down dog. Draw the right knee to the chest and the nose. Place the right foot next to the right hand. One to two dynamics. Beautiful. Keeping the right hand on the hip. Draw that left arm to the side. Lateral flexion. Beautiful. Either take the right hand to the ground or the hip. And rotate that left pinky and come in, but draw that left hip forward. Beautiful. Gently release, bring the foot. Connect into runner's pose. Step the back foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come into forward fold. Gently bend the knees. Swan bend up, open the chest and the heart. Exhale, heart center. Inhale, draw both arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Framing the feet, we're going to step that right leg back. Coming into beautiful low lunge. We'll start vertical, we'll come horizontal. Beautiful. I'm going to take my right elbow or shoulder kind of inside this right leg. And I'm going to take that back leg and bend it once or twice here. And maybe clasp a hold of the inside of this left foot at this time. And think about, now I'm releasing the quadriceps. Drawing the heel towards the buttocks. Beautiful. I liked almost a, a couple of you. I've worked on it this, this weekend. I flip my grip and I take that elbow up. Do you see that? And I'm continuing to draw the heel kind of near the outer, of outer hip or near, near the glutes here. And I'm coming into a deep quadricep release. release. Frame the foot. Connect into runner's pose. I mean, connect into phallicostal plank. Good. Belly button to the spine. Push into the ground. Round the upper back. Active legs. Beautiful phallicostal plank. Gently lower to the knees. Knee, chest, and chin all at the ground at the same time. Send those legs back, press through those tops of the feet, come into easy cobra. Transition, come into down dog. Lead with those hips. the left knee to the chest and the nose. Place the left foot next to the left hand. Come up vertical and sink lower. Beautiful. Thinking about the left elbow or shoulder kind of inside that left knee or our left little fingertips to the ground. If you can explore, maybe just bend that back leg several times. If you can, we're gonna clasp on the inside, makes it easier. And think about drawing the heel near 
that outer right hip. Sometimes I like to flip my grip where my elbow comes up and I'm drawing that heel closer. I'm releasing the quadriceps. Beautiful connection. Framing the foot. Step forward, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come into deep forward fold. Breathe into those hamstrings, breathe into that backside. Gently bend the knees, squat dive up, open the chest, open the heart. Exhale, heart center, I love it. Coming to the center of our mats, guys. And still, hold on. I'm gonna try to come into this a little bit more. <laughs> oh my goodness. That light is just so awesome, right? Can't stop the light. Come to the center of the mat. Elbows up. Add a little hop. Beautiful. Press outer edges of the feet. Root under the big toe mound. Beautiful. This is where we're going to draw the heels in a bit and explore goddess pose. Thumb and index fingers together. I'm on inside the knees here, but I'm drawing length from the tailbone through the crown of the head here. And what does goddess pose do? I'm building leg strength. Inhale, draw length. Exhale. Press into the ground. Gently release. Come up. Come back to Prasarita stance. Root under the big toe mount. Press outer edges of the feet, root the big toes in just slightly. Take those hands behind, clasp those fingers, feel the shoulder blades are coming towards one another. Inhale, create length, exhale, come forward. Adjusting that left foot, point it straight ahead, left knee, point it straight ahead. This is where that left hip kind of comes back and that back hip comes up when we explore triangle. Knee pointed straight ahead, turn that back foot in 50 degrees. Enter in and out of this posture with integrity. Inhale, create length, exhale. Lower the left hand, I'm mirroring you here. Left hand to the left shin. I want you to keep the body in one plane, not slumping forward. If we can, some of, some of you may explore a little bit deeper with the left hand outside the left hip. Shoulder over one another. If the neck doesn't bother you, you may gaze up. If it bothers you, gaze at the ground or gaze straight ahead. But if you can, gaze up. Reach the top fingertips towards the ceiling. Draw energy. Draw those bottom ribs forward. Good. Top ribs back. Breathe into that back hip. Gently inhale, root and rise. Now take that top arm, the left arm, brush the ceiling. Allow that right arm to drape the back. Open that side body. Taking that left hand, press into Virabhrasana too. Left knee towards that pinky toe. Beautiful. Good. 
Now frame the foot. Step back into plank. This is where some of you may just hold the plank or a child's pose or partial chaturanga or lower the knee or draw the sternum and chest forward, active legs. Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, press to the tops of the feet, draw the pelvis forward, broaden the collarbones, exhale, beautiful down dog, heels in line with the pinky toe, draw length in the spine, stay here several breaths. Walk the hands and feet towards one another. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come into deep forward fold. Gently bend the knees, swan dive up, open the chest, open the heart. Exhale, heart center. Coming to the center of the mat. Add a little hop, elbows up. Add a little hop, awaken. Beautiful. Coming into the hamstrings and releasing the shoulders. Let's clasp the hands behind shoulder blades towards one another. Broaden the collarbones. Inhale, create length. Exhale, come forward, breathe into those hamstrings. Continue to press outer edges of the feet. Breathe into the hamstrings and breathe into those inner groin. Think about the hands coming towards the ground. Really release. Beautiful wide legged forward fold. Inhale, back flat belly button to the spine root and rise. Adjusting this right foot. Point it straight ahead. Turn that back foot in 15 degrees. Woo. And this is where the knee points straight ahead here. So the leg rotates from inside and out and we're gonna press outer edge of that back foot. Inhale, create length. Exhale, you're gonna reach that right arm. Right arm to the shin. Keep the body in one plane. If you can, take the right hand outside the right foot. Beautiful. Fingertips towards the ceiling. Draw the top ribs back. Bottom ribs forward. Inhale and rise. Draw that right arm up. Allow that left arm to come down the, the back here, weighing you down, but yet opening that right side body. Transition into Virabhadrasana too. Right knee towards that pinky toe. Gaze over that right arm. Press outer edge of the back foot, activate that back inner thigh. Adding a vinyasa as we frame the foot. Step back into plank. Some of you will just stay plank. Some of you will do partial chaturanga or keep the elbows close to the body. Draw the sternum and chest forward. Shoulders aligned with those elbows. Inhale, beautiful Urdhva Mukha. Upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Love the sounds of the birds. Draw length in the spine. Heels closer to the ground. Walk the hands and the feet towards one another.
Shetland Gemini's. Swan dive up, open the chest, open the heart. Exhale, heart turning. Beautiful. Exploring to the edge of the mat here. You might even keep a block nearby here as we might explore crow pose. Let's touch this here. Explore tippy toe malasana. Heels together, feet together for this. Ankles, knees, and shins together. Inhale, drop both arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Relevate up on the balls of the feet. Again, ankles, knees, and shins together. I love this, ankles, knees, and shins together. That's what yoga is, a journey of the body, the mind, and the spirit. And sometimes the whole body, the soul, everything comes together. Ankles, knees, and shins. Walk those hands back, beautiful. The beginners will keep their hands here. If you wanna make it more challenging, we'll walk those hands back. And if you wanna make it more challenging, we'll lower the head towards the knee. Keep the heels together. Try to take away that space there. Connect, strengthen the muscles in the arches. Strengthen the muscles along the front of the shin and continue the breath here as we inhale, exhale through the nose. Gently lower the heels to the ground. We're gonna explore a little core work. Beginners can keep the hands here, bend those legs. If we can, we're gonna make it a little more advanced so beginners can stay here. Strengthening those hip flexors, extend those legs, Navasana boat pose. Extend those arms, beautiful boat pose. We'll stay here several times. Makasana, crow pose. We're gonna come up here. This is where we're gonna come onto the balls of the feet and we're gonna widen the knees. We're widening the knees. The hands are under the shoulders here. And this is sometimes I come on to, I really strengthen my fingers here. I press almost into the pads of my fingers and lift a little bit. I'm utilizing the core here. I'm going to uh, press the knees up high on, under the arms or under the triceps here, under the armpits and on the triceps. And I might explore with one foot at a time, exploring this posture. Eventually, maybe one foot at a time, one foot at a time, eventually lifting those hips. Some of you might put a block here to help you. And with that block, Right, the block can serve as a prop as you explore lifting the toes off the ground, hips towards the heels. It's really principles of chaturanga here. Shoulders align with those elbows. Core is at work. Elbows close to the sides still. Fun, beautiful release. We're going to explore this again. Swan dive up. I love it. Exhale, heart center. Let's do a cleansing breath together. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. We're going to explore this again. If you want to use the block, we can. We're having fun today on our mat. Inhale, drop both arms up. Exhale, we're going to swan dive down. Relevate up on the balls of the feet. Ankles, knees, and shins together. Take, if there's a gap between those heels, close that gap. If we can, we're gonna walk those hands back and explore again. Ankles, knees, and shins. 
Diving in deeper, we're gonna hover those hands under the shoulders, tip toe squat. Hands under the shoulders, and we're gonna keep the heels together, work on those heels together, and we're lowering the quad, we're lowering the quadriceps shins parallel to the ground, but yet drawing length in the spine. Whole body is connected and we're building strength. Gently release. Lower the heels to the ground. It's a tough one to work on. Exploring Navasana, boat pose. Beginners, legs parallel. Strengthen hip flexors. Eventually, hands off the ground. Eventually, straighten the arms. Straighten those legs. Strengthening those hip flexors. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, energy out the fingers. Energy out those toes. release. Feet together. We're going to explore the crow pose. Hands are going to come under the shoulders. We're going to widen those knees. We're going to rest the knees under the armpits up high on the triceps. Good. Eventually, some of us one toe, foot at a time and just exploring. And eventually some of us, right, heels towards the buttocks, using the floor to lift those hips. Principles of chaturanga in those arms. Elbows close to the sides, shoulders in line with those elbows. Gazing forward and down while we're in that pose. Gently release, one dive up. Open the chest, open the heart. Exhale, heart center. Love it. Taking the block, we're gonna continue our experiment here in our standing postures. Revolve triangle, Parvita Trikonasana. We're gonna have, we're gonna have that left leg out in front, step that right leg behind, both hips facing forward. Left hand on the hip, we're gonna draw that right arm up. Back foot is 45 to 60 degrees. Front heel intersects with the back heel or the back arch, I want both hips facing forward. Many beginners and inter, uh, are gonna keep the block on the inside of the foot. If you've practiced before, we could take the block on the outside of the foot. I want you to remember, steady hip, steady back leg, revolve the upper and middle back. Right arm up, I got, this is a workout just holding the block. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take the block. Beginners inside of this left foot. And the ends to a little bit more outside the foot. Left hand on the hip for stability. We can keep the left hand there if we need to. If the neck hurts, you can stay here. Otherwise, we're going to continue to leverage the rotation of the torso, the upper and middle back. Top ribs back, bottom ribs forward. Eventually, extend this left arm, shoulder over one another. Gaze up. Left hand on the hip, gaze at that big toe, inhale, root and rise. <laughs> Cleansing breath, inhale, exhale. Sometimes we just have to laugh on the mat a little bit. Just do our best, do you. Uh, step that left foot back. Square those hips, intersect heel to heel, heel to arch. Beautiful. Stable back foot, stable hips. We're going to keep that left arm up. 
for a few breaths because I held it longer on the other one. Good. Right hand on the right hip. Believe in this pose. It's so good for us. Stable back to a stable hip. Inhale, create length. Exhale. Many of us will take the block on the inside of the foot. If you practice, we'll place it on the outside. Good. Stable hips. The right hip comes back, left hip comes forward. Shoulders stacked over one another, right hand on the hip for stability. If we can, we can extend that right arm up. Leverage the rotation of the torso. Top ribs back, bottom ribs forward. Right hand on the hip, gaze at that big toe. Inhale, root and rise. Awesome. Stepping that block back. Cleansing breath, inhale. Exhale. As I adjust and get a few thoughts ready, just to show what some of you might use. The blanket symbolizes, a couple of you might take a blanket or pillow and almost draw it like across the body. Underneath this area across the body is what I'm saying in the pigeon pose. Pigeon is an exploration, okay? Some of you might use a smaller block under the sitting bone. Some of you might need another block. All of us are built unique and different. If your knee bothers you, remember the pose that we, I'm gonna adjust the mat, warms up with that supine expression, okay? Lying on our back too. Here we are reaping the benefits. Let's come to the edge of the mat and just simply inhale, draw arms up. Energy out the fingertips. Exhale, we're gonna swan dive. Into down dog. On the inhale, we're going to draw that left leg high. This is we're going to exaggerate. Bend that left foot towards that right hip. Stack the hips over one another. Draw the left knee outside of the left wrist. Knee towards that left corner. Beautiful. And this is where we're going to plantar flex that back foot. Now for many of us, it's a little tough. We have a hard time getting lower. We might take a block. We might take a pillow. We might take a blanket for some of you, right? A blanket kind of underneath both aspects for some people is going to kind of work wherever you are, okay? So it's okay to pause and kind of experiment with this. We, but I love to refine the posture wherever we are. Pause, maybe experiment. Press to the top of the back foot. The back of the foot is straight. Draw that left hip back and back hip forward. Let's release a little bit. Walk those hands out. Some of you lower onto those forearms and just feel that expression. Beautiful. By the way, the front heel is kind of near that right hip just to help you with that, that pose here. Some of you might take the block and just lower and sink into this beautiful pose. Ekapada Raj Kapatasana. We're going to hold one to two minutes. And the exhale is longer than the inhale.
Some of you are going to continue and hold a little bit longer in that forward fold expression. For those of you that can get the sitting bones rooted, only for those of you that can really root the sitting bones. Now we're moving more in a back bend expression, but we want to root through the sitting bones, both of them in the mat. And when we can do that, we can explore starting off with just the fingertips, opening the chest, opening the heart. Because this video was, you know, also designed about exploring, I'm just going to demonstrate something that one or two of you eventually, only when the sitting bones are rooted into the ground, can explore so we don't injure ourselves. And that is drawing the back foot up. And this is where some of you might enroll in yoga teacher training at College of the Desert. And now I tilt that right elbow up. See what I'm doing? And I might explore this pose next. Jhana Mudra Thumb and Index. Square the shoulders. Beautiful back expression. The next phase is I might move where I draw both elbows up almost the elbows together as I draw my as I bring that right foot closer and draw my head towards the arch. yoga postures we can explore we can practice there's so much to learn there's so much to observe mindfully transition I'm very proud of you guys it took me a long time to get to that pose press to the top of the back foot transition into down dog but yoga truly is a gift and long after you're done with this class I hope you take another class in your life I hope you can you continue to allow yoga in your life and study it. And even five, 10 minutes a day goes a long way. We're in our down dog. We're just kind of breathing evenly into the spine. We're gonna inhale, draw that right leg high. And we're drawing that right heel towards the left leg. Beautiful. Opening that right hip, hip stack, over one another. Drawing that right knee outside of the right wrist. Left heel towards that left hip. And we're working on squaring those hips. So we're gonna press to the top of that extended leg, that back leg, beautiful. This is such a gift. This is so good again for re releasing the outer hip, releasing the hip flexors, the body is all connected. Many of us will take our block under that right sitting bone, maybe a blanket across here, but we're just gonna kind of root down, square down, press through the top of the back foot, which is also straight in front of our hip. Right hip back, left hip forward. Eventually, some of us might come into a deeper expression here. We'll be coming onto the forearms, resting our forehead to the block here. but continue to press to the top of the back foot, square the right hip back, left hip forward.
looking for. We're going to continue to explore. And this is where a few of you who you might will stay lower. Some of you want to stay in that forward fold a few more breaths. Please go ahead. And some of you, once those hips are square, you can think about, right, front hip back, left hip forward. But we can think about beginning expressions of the back bend, lowering the fingertips to the ground, opening the chest. express. Eventually, you bend that back leg, you clasp, right, on the outer edge, yet also on the inside, and you tilt that elbow up. And eventually, maybe the jhana mudra, and this is where we're in a, another expression where we're improving here, right? This is only a few of us. The hips are square. Another beautiful back expression, but also the quadriceps. Till eventually you clasp the top of the feet because we're just exploring this pose. Open the chest, open the heart. Bringing the head towards the arch. Elbows together. guys do you transition come onto the ball of the back foot mindfully transition as we come out of this pose come into just down dog here and stay in the down dog we did a deep exploration today of pigeon there's areas that we can all refine and learn and grow but we know it is a beautiful posture and there's so many benefits. Lowering the knees, we're just gonna kind of nourish our heart a little bit, hips over the knees. We're gonna come into, let's tuck those toes, puppy dog pose. Press through those palms here. Rest the forehead onto the ground. This is where the hips come over the knees. We press through those palms, rest the forehead. A few of you guys might try to lower the chest and the chin in a deeper expression of puppy dog. Nourish the spine, lengthen the spine, and yet open the heart. Nourish the heart. Gently come out of that pose. <laughs> I love it. I leave a little seated spinal twist here. Rooting through the sitting bones. We're going to take that left hand outside the right knee. We're going to draw that right hand back and gaze over the right shoulder. sitting bones, draw length in Dandasana. Take the right hand outside the left knee and the left hand behind. Little spinal twist, gaze over the left shoulder. I actually have that right palm is open here, but we gaze over the left shoulder. Gently 
really rooting through the sitting bones, draw length in the spine. We're gonna take the strap to the midfoot, or we take the block. I like to take the block, but wherever we are, right? And this is where some of us might sit on our blanket if we have a hard time sitting up straight. This is anatomically, we might sit through a blanket or sit on a smaller block here, rooting through the sitting bones and helping us draw the pelvis into a light anterior rotation. We love the efforts, guys. Press outer edges of the feet. Inhale, create length. Exhale, come forward, forward, forward. Reach two inches, three inches, four inches, and hold. Come into beautiful forward fold. Exhale longer than the inhale, and we'll hold here a while. Inhale and rise. Beautiful. Preparing for our Shavasana. <laughs> Lovely practice today. Reach those arms up. Reach those legs. Reach two opposite directions. Let everything go. Wonderful practice. Gently relax into our Shavasana. We'll stay here five minutes. Ten minutes, however long you need to regenerate. We couldn't stop the light from shining today. The light found us, and we're going to find the light in ourselves and others, which is truly namaste. I love it. Stay here as long as you need.